what is OSMED? What are the fees like? How long is OSMED? Is OSMED difficult? What's the difference between OSMED versus A-levels? Recognized throughout the whole world. Subject combinations. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and I graduated from OSMED and MCKL back in November 2022. I'm currently learning German language now because I'll be doing my degree in Germany. I think it's a good opportunity for me to talk about OSMED and what this whole OSMED pre-university course is about. I'm speaking from the point of view where I actually do not want to go to Australia to study and I already know that I will go to Germany to do my degree even before I enroll in OSMED and later on I will discuss with you guys on why I made that decision but it does not affect this whole video of me explaining to you guys about what OSMED is about so don't worry. So today we will be discussing about what is OSMED and this video will cover a few things such as a brief introduction on OSMED, the duration of OSMED, the assessment method, estimated cost, subjects, recognition, the pros and cons of OSMED, OSMED versus A-levels, as well as other information about OSMED. Do click on the timestamps below so that you can fast forward the video to the sections of the video that suits your needs. I have my laptop right here and I'll be referring to my laptop so don't mind me if I keep on like looking to my right. First let's start with a brief introduction of OSMED. OSMED is basically the short form of Australian matriculation. It is an internationally recognized pre-U program and in simple terms it's actually the form 6 or year 12 of Australian students. So in Australia they have a few types of form 6 or year 12 uh, curriculums such as WAYS, SAYS and VCE. Of course there's more but these are like the three most like dominant ones. And OSMED uses the curriculum of WAYS. And WAYS stands for the Western Australian Certification of Education. What are the entry requirements to OSMED? You will need to have passed SPM, O-Levels, IGCSE or equivalents with a minimum of 5 credits including English. Here's the pathway of OSMED. First you will have graduated from secondary school, then you'll do OSMED which is usually one year and then you can go for your undergraduate degree in local or international universities. How long is OSMED? There are actually two different pathways for OSMED. The first one is OSMED takes up one year which is the normal pathway. The intake for the normal pathway is usually in January, February or June, July depending on the college you go to. And for the OSPEC prep, the intake will usually be in August or September. The OSPEC prep course is basically like an extended OSMEC course where during the five months, you will actually learn your year 11 stuff. And then in the next following year is the actual OSMEC one. So it's basically like the five months is like a, a, a short period of time for you to prep yourself before you enter OSMEC. So as you can see in the block here, if you do the one year normal pathway and you start in the January intake, you will graduate in November. And if you start in the June intake, you will graduate in March or April. Actually, it's like not even one year, you know, because if you minus out all the holidays and like the exam dates, OSMA is technically just 10 months, 10 to 11 months like this. And next, OSMA prep. You can, as you can see in the light pink boxes here, this will be the five the five months where you will be doing your like year eleven version of Australian curriculum, and in the dark red blocks here, you are doing the actual OSMED program, just like the one year normal pathway. So I'll recommend this OSMED prep program to those who want to have a recap on your year eleven or form five uh, knowledge. If you think you have forgotten all of it, uh. small tip on this intake thing is know your university intake and choose the correct pathway whether or not to join in the January intake or the June intake. As an OSMED graduate, I feel that the time at which the program finishes plays a huge part in your future plans after college because most universities in Australia have their intakes in February. So let's say I'm from the January 2022 intake and I graduate in November 2022. This means that I can rush up to the Australian university intake in February. But if, for example, you're planning to go to UK to study, it might be better for you to join the June intake. So if I so you join the June intake and then you graduate in April, and then you can go for the UK university intake in September, because most UK universities start in September. When the program finishes, plays a huge role if you don't want to have a gap year in between your college and university because 
the gap year might actually lead you to lose motivation to study because you lost the momentum you see so most people want to make sure that their college intake and their uh, university intake meets up there might be a small like a few months gap in between but it doesn't it's not like a gap year you know because the gap year is really long next will be the assessment method so the assessment method for osmed is a 50 to 50 percent uh, system in which 50% of your marks will be from your internal assessments and 50% of your marks will be from your external assessments which is the WASE exam, the final exam. So for your internal assessments, it will include topic tests, quizzes, assignments, investigations and research. For example, um, I did chemistry, so we have a lab exam which is part of the internal assessment. Ah. So like the teacher will give you like a lab procedure paper thing and you will have to carry out the experiment on your own. And then the teacher will evaluate you based on your experiment and you will get your marks from that. But do note that this 50-50 system is completely different from SPM or IGCSE. So it will require some time for you to adapt and get used to this Australian curriculum. But for some people, this 50-50 system is an advantage because um, they tend to excel more in the mini test during the schooling year instead of the final exam at the end of the year. So it really depends on each and every one. Uh. So next we'll talk about the estimated cost and fees for OSMED. So do note that the fees varies depending on which college you go to. But uh, for GISLA, the tuition fees for OSMED usually ranges from 14k to 19k. But the miscellaneous fees, registration fees, lab fees, resource fees, deposits, and external exam fees depends on the institution that you go to. If I were to give you a rough figure on the estimated total fees, it will be about 23k to 26k. So do note that for science and arts students, there will be a difference in OSMAP fees because if you do arts, there is no need for you to pay for lab fees. Of course, to save on college fees, do apply for scholarships because you never know you can get bursaries and discounts which would actually greatly reduce the fees of the entire course. And colleges like MCQ and Sunway do offer a shit ton of uh, scholarships, so go apply. Subjects and subject combinations. OSPAD offers quite a lot of subjects as compared to A-levels. And here's the list of subjects. We have English, English as an additional language or dialect, Mathematic Applications, Mathematic Methods, Mathematic Specialists, Chemistry, Human Biology, Biology, Physics, Accounting and Finance, Applied Information Technology, Business Management and Enterprise, Economics and Psychology. So here are the main subjects that OSMED offers in Malaysia. Also note that the subjects offered varies depending on which college you go to. Because, for example, some subjects offered in Sunway are not offered in MCKL or vice versa. I'll be explaining some of the subjects that are listed here because some people might get confused on what is the difference between this and this. So let's look at maths applications, maths methods and maths specialists. Basically for maths applications, you work a lot around financial modeling, matrices, data, de uh, network analysis, uh, growth and decay, decision making, and this kind of like research related maths stuff. So you need to envision that you are a maths, you are a researcher, and you have to think, oh, how am I going to group this data so that it will be easier for me to look at the numbers, for me to uh, evaluate and compare the different results that this may bring to me. Yeah, so it's a lot of, um, I'd say, critical thinking. Yeah. Whereas for mathematic methods and mathematics specialists, it revolves a lot around algebra, functions, x, y. If you really like that, go ahead and do maths methods and maths specialists. Do keep in mind that if you want to do engineering courses in the future, maths methods and maths specialists is a must for you to take. Yeah. And it's really hard lah, based on what I heard from my friends. English and English as an additional language or dialect, which we call EALD, the difference is that English focuses more on English literature, like writer's effects, and then you also do a lot of readings on Australian texts, and lots of analysis based on the texts and movies that uh, are discussed in class. Whereas for EALD, it is, it is considered as the simpler English, where you basically study a lot of Australian history, and it's a lot of comprehension work 
Mm, so it's actually much easier as compared to English. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. So the subjects that I took are Maths Applications, English, Accounting and Finance, Biology and Chemistry. Next, we'll talk about subject selection and which subject should you choose. Okay, so actually there's two, there's two tips I can give you on how you choose subject. First, by elimination or by interest. You can either cancel all the subjects that you do not like and pick from the remaining few or you can just choose the subjects that you are really interested in or choose a subject that you think you will excel in because this will really help you in your entire OSMAT journey. Also, do make sure that you choose the subject combination that your university course requires. So an advice for me is that do take English and Maths because that is one of like the basic subjects that everyone should know before they go uni. How is OSMAT graded and how many subjects can you take? In OSMAT, you need to select 5 subjects, but only your best 4 scored subjects will be accounted into your total marks. So this is why early on I said that you should choose the subject that you think you will excel in because you really want to get a high rank for your ATA in order for you to get into university. So it is very important to check with your counsellor or the uni that you want to go to regarding the subject combination that you should do. So because I want to go to Germany, I can give you like a side tip. La. If you want to do an art subject in Germany for your uni course, such as economics, you must take a science subject in OSMAT. If I do maths, English, psychology, economics and accounting, I will not be able to get into a German university because there is no science subject. Uh, within my subject combination. So what I need to do is that I can do maths, English, economics, uh, chemistry, let's say, and accounting. And I will get a position into a German university with the economic course because there's at least one science subject in my OSMAT subject combination. Even though chemistry is not needed in economics, but that is just one of their requirements. So do check with your university or with your counsellor on which subject combinations you should do. Water break. Uh, what is ATA and how is ATA calculated? ATA is basically the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, which gives each student a rank between 0 and 99.95 relative to the other students who did OSMAT in their country or state. ATA is basically a rank, not how well you have done in that subject. So let's say if a student receives an ATA of 54.75, the student achieved higher results than 54.75% of students in their state throughout the year. ATA is calculated by adding up a student's scores from each of their subjects and ranking this total score against other students in their state. Do note that ATA is a rank, and I have to emphasize that ATA is a rank because not like A-levels, if you get your A-levels results, you will know whether you get A, B or C, which is basically how well you have done in that exam. Whereas ATA is not a score but a rank. It is a ranking on how well you have done as compared to the other students who did OSMAT. So here's a short like example on how ATA is calculated. Let's say I did Physics, Mathematics, Methods, English, Human Biology and Economics. So my best four subjects are Physics, Mathematics, English and Human Biology. And Economics is my fifth subject because it is my lowest scored subject. So my best four scored subjects will be taken into account of my final marks, which is called the TEA. And that will basically be like my average value. And as you can see here, the student achieved an ATA of 85, which means that this student has achieved higher results than 85% of the students in their state throughout the year. So in OSMAT, the tricky thing is that your marks revolves a lot around moderation and scaling. Your marks will either be scaled up or scaled down based on all the students who have done OSMAT during that year. Another thing that a lot of people neglect is that during your OSMAT journey in your college, you are, you are also required to do an exam called OLNA, o -L -N -A, which is an online literacy and numeracy assessment. 
So according to the website, it says that this exam is designed to enable students to successfully meet the Western Australian Certificate of Education requirement of demonstrating the minimum standard of literacy and numeracy. Let's say if you really do really badly in your OSMED ways exam, then this ONA is like a backup plan. So you can take this certificate and you can also apply for vocational schools in Australia. This ONA cert is basically something to prove that you are able to read and write timetable and structure. So I'll put my OSMED timetable here. Uh, the timetable of OSMED is actually not that packed. It actually depends on what subject you take. Uh. So the timetable actually changes from semester to semester. And sometimes you might have a 3 hours break in between subjects. Sometimes you might have a 5 hour break in between subjects. But it really depends on what subject you take. Mm, so just try to allocate your time wisely. The lecturers. My lecturers who taught me back in 2022, they were all pretty okay. But a tip is that you really need to put in a lot of your own effort into doing revisions because the lecturers will not be spoon feeding you and giving you notes on like every single detail that they have taught in class. It is completely different from high school. But at the same time, also do put in the effort to communicate with your lecturers to arrange for consultation sessions because I'm sure that most lecturers will be really happy to help the students uh, as long as you're willing to learn. The recognition of OSMED. So OSMED is getting more and more widely recognized in the recent years. So yeah, that's the plus point. So other than the countries listed in this map, the other countries that accept OSMED are Ireland, Netherlands, Yemen, Taiwan and Indonesia. Pros and cons of OSMED. Is OSMED right for you? Or why is OSMED not for you? So first things first, if you want to go to Australia to study, OSMED is the shortest pathway. Moreover, you can also get used to the Australian curriculum earlier and this acts as a stepping stone for you to enter Australian universities. So MUFI is also an option, but it is only a direct pathway to a degree in Monash, based on my understanding. Of course, you can go research more about MUFI, but I'm not so sure about that course. And even if you don't want to go to Australia, OSMED is still the shortest pre-U option because it has the shortest duration which is just one year, or technically 10 to 11 months. And therefore, you can be a step ahead of everyone else, which I think it's a plus, 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 plus point. Second point, you excel better in the 50-50 assessment system. So if you think that you are a student who actually do better in your mini test within your schooling year as compared to your final exam, then OSMED is definitely a right choice for you to try. If you can commit to being consistent throughout the entire year, OSMED is definitely something that you should consider. Thirdly, if you are still unsure about what you want to study and you want to keep your options open, OSMED is also a great option because you can take both science and art subjects as the five subject combination of OSMED allows you to do so. Since you can take both science and art subjects in OSMED, it allows you to explore different subjects before ultimately deciding on what you should do in your undergraduate degree later on. Shortly, you can also save up on college tuition fees because as compared to other pre-university costs such as A-levels or IB, OSMED is actually relatively cheaper uh, than the other courses. Since OSMED is a continuous assessment kind of system, there would not be a tremendous amount of pressure and stress on you for your finals because you would have accumulated marks over the year through your various internal exams such as your tests and assignments. So next, we'll be talking about the cons and why OSMED is not for you. You excel better in the 100% assessment system and you tend to find difficulties in being consistent and hardworking throughout the entire year. So, I mean, I think this point is self-explanatory. If you think you do better in your final exams as compared to your midterm tests or like mini tests during your schooling year, do not take OSMED. And another thing is the limited resources available in Malaysia to teach OSMED. OSMED is still quite a foreign program in Malaysia, unlike A-levels, because there is low demand for OSMED in Malaysia. Hence, there will be lesser teacher experience in this field Past year papers are quite limited online, so in this case, if you think you really can't cope with your college pace of teaching, then you might need to find external tutors. 
Another thing, based on one of my friends from Australia, she mentioned that waste is relatively easier as compared to other Year 12 curriculums in Australia such as SAIS or VCE and this will put you in a hard spot if you want to go to Australia to study next time because you will need to catch up with the Australian students when you are in university. If you want to do music, law or accounting in the future, Ausmed is definitely not recommended because the in-depth knowledge on how much the Ausmed subject covers is definitely not as deep as a specialised foundation course. So if I want to be an accountant in the future and I'm going to do accounting, I totally do not recommend you to do Ausmed because the accounting knowledge in Ausmed is very shallow as compared to a foundation. Common verdict, A-levels or Ausmed? I think this is something that a lot of people will consider before taking up a pre-university course because these two courses are quite popular in Malaysia. I'm sorry because it's raining now. If you can't hear my voice, then read the subtitles. First of all, the fees. Osmet has a lower cost as compared to A-levels. Both courses are recognised worldwide, but ideally those who take A-levels want to go to UK to study and those who take Osmet want to go to Australia to study. Because the curriculum of these two different pre-use are catered according to the country in which they origin from. Next is the assessment system. A levels is 100% exams in which you in which your total marks are accounted from your final exams only. In Ausmed it's 50-50 in which you have 50% of internal assessments and 50% of external assessments. I think that a lot of people have the stereotype that Ausmed is not as great as A levels. The subjects taught in Ausmed is not as deep as A levels. Uh, and all sorts of this kind of thing in which like Ausmed is one step lower than A levels. You know, some people would think about it that way lah. But I think it really depends on your end goal and where you want to go. So do not take these kind of stereotypes so seriously because at the end, it's your life, it's your decision. Just try to choose the program that caters your needs and your future pathway. So early on, I've compared Ausmed and A levels, which is a pre-university. And next is the foundation course. So my recommendation is only do a foundation course if you are sure of what you want to do in the future. If I'm sure that I'm going to be doing business, then straight away just do foundation. Because it is a much shorter course and you don't have to waste time in a pre-university program. Where should I take Ausmed? MCKL or Sunway? Of course, there are other colleges and institutions, but these are the two most like dominant institutions that offer Osmet. Here are the criteria that I will cover. First will be fees, location, culture, transport, and teacher experience. So for the fees, Sunway is actually slightly more expensive than MCKL, but I think that they do live up to their fees because there are obviously more facilities and labs in Sunway as compared to MCKL. And moreover, Sunway is much bigger. For the location, MCKL is quite centralised because KL Central is located very near to MCKL. So you can easily travel to Pavilion, um, KLCC, as well as all the other like KL places. La. Because, like, I mean, the train station is right beside MCKL. Whereas for Sunway, uh, transport might be a bit more difficult because Sunway College is located in the Sunway area in which you will only be able to travel around Sunway and around Suba. And based on what I know, la, there is very limited uh, network of trains in that area. So, I mean, if that's an issue for you, then go to MCKL. But if you can drive and you have a car, Sunway shouldn't be an issue because, I mean, you can drive, right? So just go to places that you want to go to. So I feel there's a stigma about the culture in Sunway in which Sunway students have like the party culture, the la la zai culture, and like all sorts of stuff. Whereas MCK is more studious and more like the good good, guai zai, guai yuloi kind of like school. But all in all, I think that's a stereotype and I'm not in the position to say whether or not these people who come up with these conclusions are right or wrong. But I do think that it depends on the people you mix with. Like in some way, there are students who are studious, but there are also students who maybe like to go clubs and parties. But that goes the same for MCKL. Not everyone in MCKL are nerds or like bookworms, you know. There are also like some people who like to go party and clubs in MCKL. So I guess it really depends greatly on who you mix with and what kind of person you are.
So yeah, that's that. But I also think that culture is very important when you go to college because um, those the, the friends that you hang out with are the people you will be with throughout your entire college life, and they would greatly influence you as well as your consistency in studying and excelling in your course. For the teaching experiences, um, because I'm from MCKL and I'm not from Sunway, so I do not know whether or not the teacher experiences in OSMED is better in Sunway or better in MCKL, but this can be one of the points that you should consider if you are thinking on whether or not to go to MCKL or Sunway to study. So do check with your seniors or the school itself and see how long these teachers have been in that respective college so that you can evaluate on whether or not the teacher experiences are good enough. Tips and advice. Throughout my entire OSMED journey, I think I'm in the position to give some tips and tricks about this entire course, so open your ears and listen. Consistency is key. So OSMED is just one year, you have no time to waste. Prioritize your studies, treat every single task seriously, and do not cram up your homeworks and revisions. Because some lecturers, they like to cram up all your uh, tasks within like several weeks. Let's say if you have five subjects and every subject you have five tasks and the lecturer plans to cram uh, five tasks within the last two weeks of that month, that means you have 25 tasks or tasks within two weeks. And trust me, it's going to be very hectic. You are going to cry, you're going to die, you're going to have a lot of stress. So trust me, do not cram up all your revisions. Try to do it consistently throughout the year and allocate your time properly. Secondly, set reasonable goals each month and prioritize your studies, encourage one another, encourage your friends, study together and just um, motivate one another to just keep up with the OSMED momentum because trust me, the, OS, the because trust me, the momentum in OSMED is so fast paced that sometimes you might get really stressed out because of the amount of workload that you get every single day. Uh, thirdly, work backwards, and I think I've mentioned this just now, which means that you should keep in mind on the intake of your university course and then decide what course to take when you're in OSMED so that this does not leave you any gap months or like empty periods where you have nothing to do or you don't know what to do within that three months. In other words, you can also think of it as have an end goal and work towards that goal. OSMED is only one year, you have no time to waste, okay? No time to waste, I'm going to repeat this three times. No time to waste, no time to waste, no time to waste. Lastly, have fun and enjoy your college life, guys. Uh, make friends, take up leadership positions, join clubs. You know, just make the most out of your college life. After all, OSMED is just one year, you don't want to like... Even though studies are important, you don't want to be like studying every single day and like neglect your social life, right? So yeah, go on cafe dates, go for bowling sessions, go for uh, movie nights, you know. Participate in a lot of college activities and just put yourself out there, get to know people and just engage with other people, you know. Yeah, and for those who are still not sure about what pre-university course to take, do expose yourself to all sorts of pre-university courses, not only OSMED. Go to career fairs, talk to your counsellors, go to colleges, go to open days and just get a lot of information and then go back home, digest and compare each of these course and see which one suits you the most. Why did I take OSMED and what is my pathway? So back in high school, I already know that I want to go to Germany to study. So I did OSMED because it is the shortest pre-university program that I can do that brings me to Germany. and. My plan was to do OSMED for one year and then do my German language in the following year because I want to do my studies and my language separately. So that's about it for my OSMED introduction. Hope that all of you enjoyed this video. And if there's anything that I've said wrongly or anything that I've missed out, do let me know in the comment section down below. Bye!